God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 10. The book of Joshua chapter 6 and verse 10. You remember some time ago we had shared from the story of Joshua how the Lord ministered to him. And told him that Moses, his servant, was dead. And that Joshua should be strong and have courage. And begin to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. And as Joshua took on this responsibility. And was accountable to God too. God started to speak to him very definitively. As they came upon Jericho. They went through uh, the river Jordan and found themselves in Gilgal and then approaching Jericho. As they came upon Jericho, ladies and gentlemen, was the great wall of Jericho that surrounded the city. But yet the Lord had promised them the land. And so as they came upon this place, this great city, which the Lord said, I have already given it to you. Even though you have not received it. And that's a message for somebody today. The Lord has promised you some great things. Even though you have not received it. God has not changed his mind. He would do what he said he will do. And so verse 10 of chapter 6. Gives us some insight. Insight into what was happening. And a strategy for overcoming that great wall. Don't know what wall is before you today. Perhaps you came into this place today reflective of your own life and the barriers and, and the hurdles that you have to cross in life and those things have occupied your mind. If that's you, this is your time and your moment and the message is for you today. And so the title of this is The Hardest Commandment. The hardest commandment. And so Joshua says here. In verse 10. And by the instruction of the law. Joshua brings a message. To the people of God. And he said. And Joshua commanded the people. And Joshua commanded the people. It was an instruction from God. And by default, God commanded the people. And commanded them saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until... The day I beat you shout, then shall ye shout. Glory to God. So from this singular verse, there is time for shouting and there's time to be silent. And so now the question is, what is the hardest commandment? I know your mind is probably thinking about the Ten Commandments. From this scripture, there was a strategy for victory. There's a strategy for success. And as we look at Joshua 6 and 10, the commandment here is silence. And silence is so hard to maintain. And as an individual, as humans, we are wired to speak and to say things. From when we were little, we talked a lot. And as we grow older, we talked less and less. The more you mature uh, as a man or a woman, you begin to see the world differently. And so Joshua, by the instruction of God, brought a message to his people. As they were faced with this insurmountable problem. Faced with a war. That by their own power they could not overcome. 
Jericho had a very trained army. They understood how to defend the cities. Uh, the children of Israel had not been skilled in all of this. They came out of Egypt as slaves and had gone through the wilderness. God was fighting every battle for them and feeding them too. And so here as they stood by Jericho and looked upon Jericho, the Lord encouraged them to continue to move forward in spite of the war that was before them. And so whatever is before you today, listen to God's instruction. When the glory cloud moves, you move. When the glory cloud stay, you stay. And silence is golden, ladies and gentlemen. But there are times too that you need to give the Lord a shout. But it depends on the season and how God wants to lead you or lead me. But my message here today is your ability to understand what strategy God is good to use for the moment. And that God is very, very strategic. And sometimes he uses the shout. Sometimes he uses the silence. And so Joshua said to them. And, and understand who them were. Them were the children of Israel. Them were men and women. Them were children and youth. Them were in numbers millions of people. Them were singers. Them were soldiers. Them were a variety of people with a variety of behavior. And so how hard it was to enforce the commandment that Joshua had just established before them. However, the victory was too important than their own personalities. And so Joshua would have impressed in them and said, well, well, if you all would want to move forward and win this victory, then we have to follow with the strategy that God has given to us. And my question to you today is what strategy had the Lord placed in your hand? For the mountain that is before you and the valleys that's before you, the hard things that's before you, what is that strategy that God has placed in your hand? Have you had time to commune with God? Or am I just Cruising along as it was in the beginning, so is now and will ever be. Have I taken the time to listen to the Lord? The Joshua took the time to listen to him. And he came to the people, all of them, millions of them. Children, women, men, young and old. And specifically said to them. Joshua commanded them saying, ye shall not shout, number one. Don't you shout for the next seven days. Don't you make no noise for the next seven days, day or night. Don't you utter any word for the next seven days. Until the day I beat you shout. Then ye shall shout. Glory to God. And for, for humans, this would have been such a hard posture to maintain. And sometimes the Lord brings us to those moments where it really feels hard. It feels hard to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning when the Lord places a demand on you to stand up and pray. Yes, it does. It feels hard when the Lord said, go on a seven day fast. Yes, it does. It feels hard when the Lord reminds you of your responsibility to him. To be in fellowship every day. It's hard. When the Lord reminds you of the sacrifice that you ought to bring to him. It is hard. 
But the Lord ultimately is saying these things for your own good. And that's what a lot of us don't understand. That when God places a demand on our lives, it's not because of him. He is always God. It's because of you. For he has seen beyond you can see. He knows more than you can know. He understands more than you can understand. I feel privileged to be a child of God. I feel privileged to be able to hear from God. I feel privileged that God can download his will into my heart drive. And every single one of us should be. And what sets you apart as a Christian is your ability to see beyond what man can see. It's your ability to hear what no man can hear. That's what sets you apart. No other person heard what Joshua heard. The Lord spoke to him. Brought a message to them and said to them, for the next seven days, until you hear from me, until you hear from me, there shall be no noise. In other words, day and night, let there be dead silence in the camp. No praising God, no instrument of worship, dead silence in the camp. And as you, as you go around the walls, mind the sound. Glory to God Almighty. Now, Psalm 46, verse 10, look at what the scripture says. It says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. When God brings you to a place of silence, and most time, you and God alone. It's a moment wherein you begin to know God deeper. Uh, where you're, you're, you're shut out from the noise of this world. And begin to hear the whispers of heaven. A lot of times the reason we cannot hear is because God is whispering. And in, and in order for me to hear the whisper of heaven, then I need those moments of quietness. So if you want to hear the whispers of heaven, then you need to shut down and turn down the noise of the earth. And so as they as the were there and, and walking around this great war in silence, they're listening to God. What is the next instruction from God? That's the only way they hear it. Don't need to hear the voice of the man who's standing by my side. I need to hear the voice of the Lord. Because the victory is too important for me to be distracted by the song of somebody. I want to hear God's voice. And Joshua said, shut it down. Not every time that you have to speak. Back in the day, we were lectured to understand that silence is the best answer to a fool. Not, not, every, not every conversation you get into. A lot of us are too conversational. And therefore, we miss out of what God wants to do in the moment. And yet, there's always a second chance, but why do I need to? Be in the second chance mood. Yes, it's always a third chance, but that may be two years from now. Understand God, ladies and gentlemen. I see God as one who really has no time to waste. If you're not ready for him, he's gone. Next. The angels, the angels got so much to do, I just picture it. They have got so much to do that yeah, if you're not ready, they're going back into heaven. Until you're ready. 
And then that till you're ready may be a year from now. Some of us are too busy that we cannot hear what God is saying. And sometimes the Lord wants us to be quiet and silent so we can hear from him. We can hear what he's saying. And, and not only that these skills work with God, but they work with men too. And, and, I, and I said this some time ago and I have it posted on, on our social media. Just because you know how to fight doesn't mean you get into every fight. Yes, sir. Just because you know how to talk doesn't mean you get into every conversation. You all need to pick what conversation you get into. Not every conversation at the fire. Not every conversation lead you to God. Some lead you away from God. That's why I say the hard commandment. How can you keep three million people silent for seven days? Just think about how hard that is. Think about being in solitary confinement, I use that loosely. What that means, you're in a room by yourself. And everybody, you have a commandment to be quiet for seven days. Don't shout, don't talk, don't utter any word. Just think about how hard that is. Seven days. I can guarantee you, after two days, you start hallucinating. You start hearing voices in your mind. But it was God's method for delivering the children of Israel from the people of Jericho. Because something was about to happen that has never happened before. A war capable of riding four chariots at the same time. It would today look like a four-lane highway. That's how big this will look like. And before the children of Israel, and God told them that he had given them that land. And they couldn't go in except the world opens up for them. Except they have a breakthrough. And God said to them, if you need a breakthrough, you ought to work for it. And not a lot of Christians want to work for it. You cannot get the prize until you pay the price. There's a prize to pay for what we do. The kingdom of God is not by observation. It does not come by observation. That's what the Bible says. Can't come by spectating. It's hard work. Prayer is hard work. Worship is hard work. Consistency. Is hard work. It's not by observation. And God said, if you truly need the victory, you have to work the work. Be silent and quiet until you hear back from me to shout. And so scripture said, be still. You, you're not able to know them God until you come to that moment where you hear God's voice from behind saying this is the way working when every noise of the world is tuned out and now tune in to heaven's sound as those whispers come out of heaven through the cloud into your ears the quieter you are, ladies and gentlemen, the more sound you hear. The quieter you are, ladies and gentlemen, the more sound you hear. When you're in a noisy place, it becomes chaos. The sound that comes into your ears become, becomes chaos, chaotic. But as soon as you can begin to tune them out, one frequency to another, you start to hear it. I can hear God now speaking to me. 
No wonder sometimes Jesus would ascend up into the mountain. He sends away the multitude. Because with the multitude you have the children crying. You have the women. You have the men. You have the sound of boots. And Jesus sends them away. And Jesus retreats right up on the mountain. So he can hear. Thus said the Lord. When you can get thus said the Lord. It makes the world of a difference in your life. Can't go by what folks say. Can't run your life by what folks say. It's so important to us as Christians. To get that thus said the Lord. Can't get thus said the Lord. Until you truly hear thus said the Lord. It's that moment. When you ascend up into the mountain like Moses. Moses was with the people. You know that the higher you go, the less and less the oxygen up there. So for some of you today, you've gone higher and higher with God. And as you go higher and higher with God, not a lot of people can come with you. And so the sound gets lower and lower and lower. At the foot of the mountain, you can hear the dancing and the drumming and the music. But as you ascend up onto Mount Hovrim, the sound begins to go less and less and less. And then the whisper of the Lord breaks through the cloud. And the glory of God comes down. Moses, after he had been there with God, 40 days and 40 nights. He came down and his face was shining. And the people could not steadfastly. What that means, they could not look upon him. It was like the sun at 12 noon. Can gaze upon the sun directly. They couldn't look at him steadfastly. They could not. Because of the glory that came upon him. Having been up there where there was no noise. The silence of man's voice and audible of God's voice. And so the Lord said to them all, as you go around this, reduce the volume of your sound. Then I increase the volume of my sound. So the quieter you are, the more sound you can hear. Some of us are too quarrelsome. And in those moments, what you're doing, you're creating chaos. And God is not an author of confusion. He, he, does not, he does not function in chaos. The world was chaotic. There was chaos in the world. When he said, let there be cosmos. Cosmos means order. Let's bring order to this. God, that's right. In the New Testament, the Bible said God is a God of order. Let everything be done decently and in order. So he does not flourish in chaos. When you create chaos around you, the angels say, well, see you later. When you're ready, we shall be back. And Joshua successfully with the people maintained that moment of silence every single day as they surround the wall. And the people of Jericho wondered why the children of Israel were silent Throughout those times while they camped outside of the war. Not understanding that it was God's strategy for bringing down the war. Your silence is not a sign of weakness. And so when the Bible says, those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. It's not a sign of weakness. When you retreat back into your closet, as the Bible say, a place of your prayer, a place of your meeting with God, a place of where you have built that altar with God, shutting out everything in the world, it's not a moment of or sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. But they who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings 
like eagle. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13. And Moses said to the people. As there was chaos in the, in the midst of them. In the camp. Fear came. You know what, you know what fear does? It agitates you. It brings about anxiety. Your heart is raising. Your mind is raising. You're talking fast. But if you can bring yourself back to yourself. You know, ladies and gentlemen, there's sometimes you need to hit your head and tell your head, stop. God bless you. You need to do that to yourself sometimes. And say, stop. You cannot continue in this chaotic environment. If you need God to move, then you need to be quiet now. If you need God to move. Now just picture God standing there. And he wants to move in your life. And you are just all over the place. And he's saying boy. Take it easy. I'm here. Calm down. How many of you would. Be able to provide. Adequate help. For somebody. Who is not still. Who is not calm. And he's jumping all over the place. What do you do first? Tell him, calm down. If you want me to help you, then you all need to calm down. And sometimes that's what God says to us. If you need my help, you need to calm down. You're too agitated now. You're too fearful. That's why he always said to us, fear now. Put those things away. If you need me to help you, calm down. Be quiet for a moment. Have you met somebody you're trying to counsel with them and they're just talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking, talking non-stop? What do you do? You wait for them to finish. <laughs> and you can ask them, are you finished now? Can I talk? <laughs> because they wouldn't let you. And sometimes we don't let God. And God is waiting for his own moment to bring solution to what I'm going through. But because I have not let him, then I continue to prolong my moment of stress. And so Moses said to them, Moses, in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, Moses said to the people, fear ye not, number one. Dismiss fear from your heart. Because fear creates chaos. Let's bring order right now. Because in those moments you cannot listen right. Just think about it. When you, when you are in very anxious moment, you don't think right. And it's the worst time to make decisions. The worst time to make decisions. When you are in those anxious moments. And there are some of us who have made very bad decisions. During those moments of anxiety and chaos and fear. Not the will of God. Those decisions. No. Not the will of God. Because you have not had the time to listen to God enough for God to lead you. And so Moses said to them, fear not. Remove fear. And then number two, stand still. That's hard. That's why the title of the message, the hardest commandment. It's hard to stand still. When you see the Egyptians running with, on their horses, pursuing to bring them back in captivity, and the Red Sea before you, there's no way to go forward. And Moses is saying to them, stand still. That's hard. That's hard. Something is about to happen. Storm is coming. And the pastor says, stand still. And you can see it. That it's coming right now. And says, stand still. It's hard to stand still. It's hard to stand still. When you can see it coming towards you. But Moses said, if, if you need, if you are, ladies and gentlemen, 
If you all, he's saying to them, all oh, you Israelite, you can go back to Egypt now. You were slave over there for about 430 years. The rest sea is before you. We cannot swim. Because we're never taught how to swim. If you need salvation, you got to do this. This is what it's saying. If you need salvation, you have to do this. You have to take away fear from your heart. Hard thing to do when you're seeing all of the soldiers coming towards you. Tough thing. But you got to deal with that. You got to hate yourself and say, stop. And he said, if you need it desperately, then you need to stand still. Stand still as just stand, close your eyes, and wait for whatever happens. <laughs> so said that. Stand still. He said, when you do this, then you will see the salvation of the Lord. Without this thing, forget about it. We're going back to Egypt. Because the Egyptians, they'll take us back. So if you truly, truly need salvation, then you do this truth. I can picture all of them, children, all the mamas, they brought their kids to them. So Moses said, we all need to stand still. Moses said, we all need to take fear out of our heart. Don't know how I'm going to deal with it, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to be still. When my mind is trying to tell me to be afraid, I'm going to try to override that spirit. Because I desperately need the salvation of the Lord. Have you ever been in a situation where there's only one way? The way of God. That if God does not save you, you know you're finished. Have you ever been in that situation where you are boxed in a corner, driven to a corner? And the only way out is the way of God. And even in those moments, the Lord expressly says to you, stand still. Fear not. And you will see my salvation. And you're telling yourself, stand still. Your body is trying to move. Stand still. Your mouth is trying to move. You hear it. You stand still. Because the Lord said it. If I don't do those things, I cannot see the salvation there. As Moses told him, it was not easy. And Isaiah picked it up in Isaiah 30 and 15. He said, Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. Isaiah 30 and 15. Thus said the Lord. The Holy One of Israel. The Bible says. In returning and rest, ye shall be saved. In returning and rest shall ye be saved. He said, in quietness of the mind that bring confidence in the Lord shall be your strength. That's what scripture says. Those moments of being able to be silent in the presence of the Lord because the Lord says, be silent. It's an expression of confidence and strength. And it takes somebody who's truly desperate for God's move in their lives. Having been driven to a place where there is no eternity. Mind that word, eternity. The reason most of us are not sold out to God is because we have eternity. You are pursuing an eternity. An eternity that does not bring you to the perfect will of God for your life. An eternity that does not allow you to fulfill your destiny. Your destiny meaning the very reason why you were born to this earth. An eternity that allows you to live a life that's not yours. 
Because you've been so good at imitating other people and learning their ways that you are now like them. But have not broken through to be you. And for that pursuit of that alternative, you have neglected paying the price to be who you have been made to be. So these scriptures are for folks who truly understand that I can be who God says I can be. I can overcome what God says I overcome. I can prevail over what God says I prevail. But I got to follow God. Seven days in quietness. Until, and sometimes the Lord does not give us the ending of it. He just said, be quiet until you hear from me. Say, Lord, but they, they, they're saying all kinds of things about me. God said, be quiet until you hear from me. God, I must retaliate. How, how, how can I take this? How, how, can this how, how can this be done? To be quiet until you hear from me. Lord, they're messing with my mind. Be quiet until you hear from me. Lord, this is not fair. Be quiet until It is hard. It is hard. Because we are wired to react. We are wired to react. We are wired to react. But I need to override my urges and tendencies to react, to begin to respond. There's a big difference. Between being reactive and being responsive. Be responsive to God. When my body is prompting me to do. And the Lord said, claw it back, baby. Claw it back. Claw it back. It's going to be alright. There's a future for you that's better than this. You will mess up your future. If you get yourself in the mind with this book. You will mess up your future. There's something greater in your life. Don't let them take it from you. There's an anointing upon you. Don't let them take it from you. There's grace and glory and greatness. Don't let them take it from you. And the Lord said, be quiet. Be quiet. Do you know folks have truncated their destiny because of their reactiveness? There are folks in jail today because of their reactiveness. If had they just been able to stop, it hurts, but it, it helps you stop. You would you would have just called back and said, "All right, okay, I stop, I stop, I stop, I stop," and you are back in line, moving to your promised land. Had they not fulfilled this word that the Lord said. Jericho isn't coming down. Those walls will not come down. I tell you, I guarantee you. They'll be stuck between River Jordan and Jericho. They'll be stuck between them. But they had, a, it was only seven days to secure eternity. A promise of God. But they were willing to do it. They were willing to the Lord. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Take a moment talk to God. Those hard things, those hard commandments don't know what they are. To all of us they're different. God set some hard commandments into our lives and he wants us to do them because there's a glory on the other side. But sometimes we're just not willing because our bodies our minds are not wired like that that it takes the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God was in Joshua and as he communicated that commandment to them all everyone was willing to follow nobody broke the law not the kids 
Nobody. And they stayed quiet for those seven days. And on the seventh day, Joshua told them after they had gone around it seven times. He said, give a shout. And that was the first time that they were speaking again. And the wars came down gloriously. And God gave them victory. They didn't have to fight. God fought for them. They didn't have to do anything. They just walked in and took the land. Because they did what God asked them to do. It was hard. It was difficult. But they did anyway. Because for them there was no alternative. There was no going back. Egypt was too far to go. Too far to go. There was no alternative. There was a glory ahead of them and before them. That's better than where they're coming from. They had their mind made up. They had it made up. They had it made up. Let the Lord help you and help me to be in the will of the Father in the name of Jesus. To be in the will of the Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to your name. Lord, we thank you for the message we have today. And Father, we just commit ourselves to you. Lord, we know that this is hard. But Father, there is nothing hard with you. Nothing is difficult with you. Nothing is impossible with you. And Father, we know it, that if we commit ourselves to you, that God, you will help us. And Father, help us through, that when we hear from you, we do what you say. If you have been blessed by this message, or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188, or visit our website at www kingstabernacle.org You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.